Cheers, I do buckaroos as I try to get that uh, in the right spot. So what I have here is this is from Tyan Timber Brewing. It's a 16 ounce can uh, of their uh, Wanderluster. And I'm gonna read a little bit from their website here. Uh, after resting uh, for a year, it's a barrel eight saison, I should say right up front, 7%. After resting for a year in both red wine and white wine barrels, our Wanderluster Saison has transformed beautifully, capturing the character of each wine barrel uniquely. We have enjoyed these beers individually and blended, equal parts red and white. We recommend you do the same at home and let us know which one you like the most. Uh, again, 7% Saison. And what I have here first is the white. So I opened a can of each because I'm going to do an individual of, of the red and white. And then we'll kind of blend them together like they suggest we do. <laughs> so I'm glad I put them in two separate glasses because I was... I, I don't know, I didn't expect it to be red, but I was expecting a little bit more of a pigment from the red wine barrel, and they're damn close. Although now they got them together, this one is a deeper golden on the red wine. But we're gonna do white wine first. So a Saison, Saison will typically give you banana and clove-like notes, and other floral notes from the Belgian yeast. But that white wine takes it in a whole other direction, right? It says white wine barrel. It doesn't specifically tell me what white wine, white, what white wine barrel. It doesn't tell me if it's a Chardonnay, which is probably most likely, or a, or, or a Sauvignon Blanc, but it's most likely a Chardonnay, but those will be more prevalent, I'd suppose. Or a Cinnamon Blanc, I mean, there's a lot of white wines out there. I personally prefer prefer a uh, Sauvignon Blanc, which is why I said that. But you do have those white wine notes on the nose, which is kind of where I was going with that. On top of the notes that you might get from a... From a Saison, I, I definitely get a lot of pear. I feel like I'm getting some light walnut notes, but that could be just me. I just could be messed up. <laughs> Who knows? Time. Anyway, cheers. Oh, oh, damn! Uh, that's 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 gorgeous. So yeah, you know, I I, I like the style, the saison, but it's not necessarily in my home run swing. What is my home run swing is anything barrel aged. I do love anything barrel aged. So the fact that they've got this barrel aged, oh. You know, even though you get a little bit of sweetness up front. Those barrel notes just, just clean it right out. Oh, gosh, you really feel those, those dry, oaky notes. I feel like I'm getting some underripe plum against some pear. And I still feel like I'm getting walnut notes, man. That could just be me. <laughs> I want to put that down. And then we're going to go red. I'm going to put the can over here so don't get confused what's what. I'm going to adjust my chair a little bit as I switch to my red, <laughs> my red wine. Anyway, a red wine barrel. Wander Lester, 7% Saison. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's interesting, man. So right away, you can tell the difference on the nose. I've mentioned you might feel some some like underripe plum over here on white wine. Over here, I feel like I'm getting some overripe plum on the red wine. I'm not feeling those walnut notes that I was getting over here though. Oh shit, biscuits. That's good. Oh wow. Well, I'm having a hard time telling which one I like better. To be honest with you. Because they both come at you in a different direction. You do get those dry oaky notes and, and the finish. Uh, I, I do feel them to be uh, uh, 
slightly more, I don't know, powerful is the right word, but, but they're, they're more up front, more in your face on the white wine than I'm getting on the red wine. They're just slightly more subtle on a red wine, let's just say. But it dries up just the same. <laughs> wow, that's freaking gorgeous, man. That's, that just makes me feel good all over. Martin. Yeah, that's good, man. Anyway, we're going to stop there for now, and I'll come back in a minute. We'll, we'll do a blend of the both, and we'll see where we're at. Well, cheers, and I do buckaroos, as promised. Here is, well, here's both of them. So we did it just red, just white, or just white, just red, actually. Now I have them combined here. And what I tried to get as equal parts in here, we'll just assume I did it the right way. <laughs> and whereas on the white wine barrel, I was getting some pear notes. Uh, I've mentioned some English walnut notes, very dry, oaky finish very clean. Uh, I've been, uh, also mentioned that you might feel some uh, some underripe uh, plum-like notes. On the red, I was feeling overripe plum and some cranberry notes, maybe some cherry notes. Together, I mean, wow, uh, it, it is something, right? So you'd still get some of those notes, uh, although I, I haven't lost the nutty notes altogether. They, they, they are muted somewhat now because when it was just white, I really felt those nutty English walnut-like notes in a great big way. And I, uh, again, I feel some cranberry notes and I feel some sour cherry-like notes. And although... I'm going to say it finishes semi-dry in the red, which is extremely dry in the white. Here it kind of, you know, it kind of blends that together. You do feel those nice oaky notes. That's beautiful. I, which way do I like it better? Well, that's, that, that's a question, right? Um, honestly, I really couldn't tell you because it's interesting red, it's interesting white. Together, it sort of blends everything that you've had into one one glass, you know? Uh, so it works either direction is what I'm trying to tell you. Good man, I don't know what to say. Anyway, anyway, I digress. Uh, it, it's beautiful, actually. You know, the saison typically will give you some banana and clove-like notes, along like have the bites it will, and you're gonna find those. But because of because of, of, of the aging in the red barrel, red wine barrel, and the white wine barrel, it does take all the flavors and all the aromas in a different direction. It's incredibly aromatic. It's incredibly flavorful. And because of the type of beer it is, it, it's not going to hurt to warm it up a bit. In my opinion, it's going to be best about, even though you might want red wine colder than, or white wine colder than, than red, in this particular case, I'm, I'm thinking this beer is probably going to give you its best aroma if, with the mix together, let's say. Uh, the combination of both at about 50 to 55 degrees, and more of a cellar temp. Not necessarily room temp, but a cellar temp. A lot of folks have trouble making that distinction. But a lot of times when folks are talking about beer at room temp, what they really mean is cellar temp and not room temp. Anyway, anyway, that's all I got for you. I am Tom, the Beer Whisperer. Beer Evangelist, pleasure, beer drinker, beer was an all-around good guy. Cheers. That's beautiful, man. That's beautiful. <laughs>